So we've created our bindable, drawable system, and it is good, but there is tons of room for improvement. So the first thing we can notice is that, well, I mean, all these boxes, we're creating 80 boxes, we're creating 80 vertex buffers, 80 vertex shaders, but they're all the same vertex buffer. They're all the same vertex shader. Everything is the same, basically, between these boxes. Uh, so it's pretty wasteful to create separate instances of all of these D3D resources when they're all the same thing. We'd like to share them between boxes. Every object of the class box should be able to share its common bindables. Now, when I ask you how do we share data between all of the objects of the same class, hopefully you'll say, well, Chili, you know, we use static, right? We use static variables for that. And that indeed is what we are going to do. But there's a question, where do we put the static variables? And you might say, well, Chili, um, there's two places we can put them. We could put them in the base class, drawable, or we could put them in the child class, box. Uh, so if we put it in box, we'd have to put, you know, a vector, a static vector in here, and then maybe some static member functions to add binds, just like we had in the drawable. Uh, but there's a problem with that. First of all, you'd have to do that for every different type of um, drawable that inherits from the base class. You'd have to repeat, copy and paste all that code. The other problem is that the draw function here, it only has awareness of the per instance uh, bindables that are in the drawable class here, in that vector. It doesn't have any awareness of the static ones. So it's two problems to solve. And you might say, well, then we'll just push this static data up into the base class. So we'll put our static uh, vector of static bindables, the bindables that are the same for all instances of box or all instances of sphere or whatever. But that's that doesn't work. That doesn't work, right? Because if we put the static data up in the drawable class, there will be one copy for drawable as a base class. That means that box, sphere, pube, they will all share the same static bindables. But we don't want that. We want separate static bindables um, for pube, sphere, and box. So we're at a little problem here. We, we basically, we've got to do copy and paste if we want separate static bindables for each one of these derived classes. Now let me show you one weird trick C++ programmers hate them. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a class in this inheritance hierarchy between drawable and the actual concrete classes. And uh, we are going to call this one, it doesn't really matter what we're going to call it, we're going to call it drawable base. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a template class, T. And for every different type of class that inherits from drawable, we're going to have it inherit instead from drawable base. And it is going to inherit from drawable base with a different T. So box is going to inherit with templated on X and sphere is going to inherit templated on Y and pube is going to inherit templated on Z. Now because they're templated different uh, parameters, that's going to create three different instances of this drawable base class and they're all going to have their own separate static data. So if we put the, uh, the static vector in here, we're going to get it copy and pasted by the compiler instead of manually copy and pasted by us. Now the only problem is we have to give each one of these guys different template parameters. What parameter should we choose? Well, easiest one is to choose the parameter of the actual type that we are defining. So we can do box inherit from public um, base and template it on the type that we're creating and it works. And we'll just do that for every one. You'll see, you'll see. It's going to be good. Trust me. It's cool. All right. So let's take a look at the code. All right. So as threatened, I create the, uh, the class drawable base. And we can see here it's a template class T. And it inherits from drawable. It has static member data, which is the vector I talked about. And here you have to declare it outside or define it outside of the class. Because uh, that's what you do with static. 
And in uh, template, you put it in the header file just below the class, basically. And then you've got some functions. You've got uh, functions to add bindables to the vector for the index buffer and for non-index buffer. You have a function here that checks to see if the static data has been initialized, because you only want to initialize it once. Basically, if you're doing box, right, the first box will initialize all the static data, and the rest of them don't need to initialize it again because it's already been created. So you need a way of checking to see whether it's already been initialized. And my way is very simple. Uh, if the vector here is empty, that means it wasn't initialized. So we're assuming here, it's a, a big assumption, but we're assuming that there is going to be at least one static bindable. And that's a decent assumption for right now. Although it's probably not one you'd want to make in a super uh, perfect system. But anyways, so we've got this uh, function here to check if it's been statically initialized. To add binds. And here is the tricky, here's the little tricky dicky. So in Drawable, I do two things. I make Drawable base a uh, friend of Drawable, so it has access to the, uh, the privates. And I also create this pure virtual function, get static binds, because Drawable needs access to these static binds um, that are going to be declared by its children. Uh, so we need something to bridge the gap between our, our static templated world and our dynamic virtual world, and that's going to be this virtual function here. And if we look at drawable.cpp, we see now in our draw function, we bind all of the instance binds, and then we bind all the static binds by calling this function here, get static binds. It'll get a reference to the vector, then we can loop through all the elements in the vector, call bind. Then we finally issue the draw command. And in drawable base, the promise is fulfilled here. We implement the get static binds, and we just return static binds. Then in box.h, the way we now de declare our box.h is we do class box public drawable base templated on box. And in box.cpp, there's a little bit of a change here. Now we check to see if we are statically initialized. If not, we do all of our static initialize, calling add static for all these binds. And then at the end, we do our non-static initialization. And there's only one bind that is not static, and that is the transform. Because every box is going to have its own individual transform, right? If we gave them all the trans same transform, they just all stack up on the same space in the world. Wouldn't make any goddamn sense, would it? Now, if we check out a branch at this commit and we run this, you're going to see a big old crash, big old exception. This was null pointer. That's never good, right? Well, let me show you something neat. If we go into app.cpp and we change the number of boxes, one, and then we run it, it works fine. What if we change the number of boxes to two? Obviously 80 was too many, but maybe two will be fine, right? All right, crashes, okay. So, this is a fun, a little bit of a fun one to debug, but it's not super hard. Uh, the problem, as you can imagine, lies in the new logic we added for static initialization for those bindables that are shared by all instances of box. So we're only calling and adding these functions once. And that's good. That's what we want. Except one of these functions is not like the other. Add static index buffer, right? Because when we add an index buffer, we're not only adding the index buffer to the, ver the, uh, the vector of bindables, we're also setting the pointer to the index buffer that exists in every instance of the, uh, the drawable class. So what happens is the first box that is created, it does the static initialization, it adds the index buffer, it sets up its own index pointer. The second box does not do the static initialization, does not set its index buffer pointer, so that pointer is no pointer, and then when we call draw on that bad boy, we try to access the index buffer to get the count, and it shits the bed, which is rightfully so. So, we need some way of getting all those other boxes, getting their index buffer pointer set up. But all we have is a big vector of uh, bindables. We don't know which one really is the index buffer. And the solution to this problem wasn't that difficult to come up with. Um, in drawable base, we're going to add another function and we're going to call it set index from static. 
So if the index buffer is in the static binds, then uh, for all of the boxes or whatever that aren't doing static initialization, we've got to call set index from static. And all it does really is it loops through all the static binds. It uses dynamic cast to find the one that is the index buffer, and then it sets the index buffer pointer. And I've just got a couple of asserts here, just uh, sanity checks to make sure you're not trying to do something incredibly dumb. And then in box.cpp, the logic is very simple. If you're doing static initialization, you proceed as normal before. If you're not doing static initialization, you should set your index buffer uh, reference or pointer from static. And doing this now, it works perfectly fine as before. Only now we don't have all that duplication of the identical, you know, vertex shader, pixel shader, all that stuff. It's all being shared between the instances of box. The only thing different for each box is its uh, transform constant buffer. Everything else is shared. All right, so our system is shaping up pretty nicely here. There are, of course, many more improvements we can make, but let's make one more and then call it a day. So we've got our transform constant buffer, and this is the only one that is being stored as a per instance bindable. All these other bindables are being stored as uh, per class in static data. So here, and that's good because every instance needs its own transformation. It needs a separate matrix uh, because it's got to have a separate position in the world. But here's the thing. Does the whole does the whole of this transform constant buffer object need to be separate? Because think about it. There are two parts in the member data here. One is the reference to the drawable. Now every transform constant buffer needs to have its own reference to a different drawable, right? Because they're all, every different drawable will give you the different transform that will give you the different position on the world. But do they all need their own separate constant buffer? I mean, if they're just updating a constant buffer and then binding a constant buffer to the pipeline, which is then used to draw the vertices, couldn't they all use the same constant buffer and just update that one constant buffer every time? The answer is yes, let's do that. Again, the solution isn't that difficult. All we do is we make the, uh, the constant buffer here. We're going to make it static and we're going to make it uh, dynamically allocated. And that's so that we can lazy allocate it later on. And then in the CPP file here, we check to see if the constant buffer has been allocated yet. And if not, we allocate it. And then in the bind function here, we use the static constant buffer. And because it's a static uh, variable, we've got to declare it down here like this. And there you go. In drawable base, what am I doing here? Ah, uh, this is just some minor housekeeping. I decided that these functions here, like add static bind and so forth, they don't need to be publicly visible. They can be protected. They only need to be seen by the children of this class. Uh, and I can make this function here static, change this message in here just a little bit. And in drawable, I also, what did I do here? Well, I made this protected. Because again, these add bind, add index buffer, those, uh, they don't need to be publicly visible. Now there's one last minor detail I just want to quickly go over here, and that is the no accept uh, specifiers here. I've made some of them conditional. So here, depending on whether the uh, build is a debug build or release build, it might or might not throw. In this macro here, I define it myself. You can do the same if you go into the properties, go into the preprocessor, and you can set, for example, in release here, I set is debug equal to false. And in debug, I set is debug equal to true. And there we have our bindable, drawable system. Everything now, all of these different bindables are now organized into their own separate files, their own separate objects. They can be mixed and matched, added to any kind of object, any kind of drawable, that we want to create and render onto the world. We've eliminated that loading of resources every frame. We've eliminated duplication, redundancy of resources. And it's clean, it's dynamic. The top level interface is super simple and it makes my dick real hard. But yeah, there's still plenty of things that we can do. There's plenty of problems. One, probably the biggest issue right now is that we are binding these resources for every single instance of a box, even though the resources between uh, instances of boxes, they don't change. The vertex shader doesn't change. We don't actually have to bind it every single draw call. And that's an improvement that we can look at in the future. But for right now, we have improved our system enough 
so that we can continue on with the tutorials, continue learning about the API, and we'll look at improving this system in the future as it becomes an issue. Last thing I want to add is just a little bit of a disclaimer. I This design here, it has two purposes. Number one is to solve the problem that we currently have in the tutorial, which was reloading the resources every frame. The second purpose of this design here is just to expose my viewers to new ideas, new design spaces that they might not have been aware of. Now that doesn't mean, and that the one thing that I just want you to understand is some people, they see me do a certain design or show off something and they say, oh, this is the way it must be done. Chili showed me how to do it. This is how I'm going to do everything from now on. But no, that's not, that is completely not right. This is just an idea, one out of many ways that you could solve the problems. Don't take this and run with it as if it was set in stone. This is how things must be done, because that's absolutely not what I'm saying here. I just want to show you guys some cool and interesting shit and get moving on with the tutorials. And that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.